Hi, I'm Sean Duggan, the co-author of the Creative Digital Darkroom, Photoshop Artistry, and Real World Digital Photography. You can also see my Photoshop for Photographers tutorial column in Layers Magazine. In this tutorial movie, I'm going to show you how to use a pretty simple technique to fix a blown out sky, such as we have in this photograph here. Now it may look like the sky is overcast in this image, but it's actually not overcast at all. And the clue to that is that we have a pretty hard defined shadow coming from the washed up boat. And if it really was an overcast sky, we wouldn't have that because of course in an overcast sky, it makes the light source from the sun a very soft, diffuse source, and you typically don't have these hard even shadows. What was going on in this picture is that the sky was filled with smoke because the week I took this, California had over a thousand wildfires burning in the northern part of the state. This was taken near the Point Reyes National Seashore, about a little over an hour north of San Francisco, and even though it was pretty close to the coast, the smoke was still really, really bad, which made it pretty nasty to breathe and also not very pretty to photograph. But here's a quick way we can fix that. What I'm going to do is come over here to my Layers palette, and I'm going to click on the Adjustment Layer button, or as I like to call it, the Yin Yang icon, and I'm going to add a Curves Adjustment Layer. In the Curves dialog, I'm going to open up the Channel menu at the top here, and I'm going to choose Red. Now since the area that I want to affect in this image is up here in the sky, what I'm going to do is drag down on the point that controls the highlights in the curve, and that's this upper point here in the upper right corner of the curve. So I'm going to drag down maybe about one and a half grid boxes down. And what is happening here is that in the red curve you can control red and its opposite color of cyan. So since we drag down on the curve we subtract red which adds cyan into the image. Okay. Next stop I'm going to go to the green channel and essentially I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come up here to this upper corner point in the upper right and drag that down roughly about one and a half squares. What's happening here is that with the green curve, we can control green and its opposite of magenta. So you can see if I drag down even further, I add more magenta. And that addition of magenta, or the subtraction of green if you want to look at it that way, is essentially just evening out the color balance so it's not quite so cyan, and it's making that sky look kind of a nice pleasant blue color. I'm also going to come over here to the RGB channel, the main RGB curve, and I'm just going to drag down a little bit up in the top part to darken that a bit. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to say OK to that. So the sky looks pretty good now, certainly much better than it looked before. However, the big problem is, of course, is that I've got this bluish color cast uh, happening in the rest of the image. To fix that, what I'm going to do is open up the Advanced Blending Options. And to do that, I'm going to come here to my Layers palette, and I'm going to double click right to the right side of the layer name. Not on the layer name, but just to the right side of it. Double click right there and bring up the Layer Blending Options. Now where I want to be in this dialog box is under Blending Options here, and then I'm going to come down to the Blend If sliders right here. These sliders help you control how a layer blends with the layers underneath it. So what I want to do is I want to tell Photoshop to take the effect created by this Curves Adjustment layer, but only apply it to the bright areas of the sky and not to the darker areas of the shadows or the midtones like that. So I'm going to come to the Blend If sliders, and I'm going to go to the slider that controls the underlying layer, and I'm going to move that shadow slider all the way over to the right till I get up to about, oh, I don't know, 200, maybe 215, 220. And you can see, as I do that, that it's just removing that bluish color cast from the rest of the image. Problem here is that I've got this really hard edge transitional edge there. I can fix that by actually splitting these sliders, which I'll do by holding down Option on Mac or Alt on PC and clicking on one side of it and that will split those sliders apart and it creates a little transitional zone here. It's basically saying don't apply the effect to any value at 187 or lower, then start to gradually apply it and by the time you get to level 220, apply it at full strength. So what that does is that creates a nice transitional edge here and fixes that part of the image. However, this particular picture has uh, some curveballs to throw at us because the light areas on the stern of the boat are being affected still by the uh, adjustment. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use this layer mask right here. Let me zoom up so we can see that a little bit better. I'm going to get the brush tool and I'm going to make black my foreground color. It already is down here and that's what I want to have. 
and I'm going to come up here to the opacity for that and set it to 100%. And I'm just going to paint there on the back side of the boat, and that is removing the edge of, or it's removing the, the bluish color that is contaminating those light areas. I'm going to use a smaller brush to come up here and get the top part. I don't really need to worry about the darker parts at the top of the boat because they are much darker than the sky so they're not being affected. So there we have it. That worked out pretty well. Uh, one final thing I'm going to do, let me just zoom up to 100% so we can see this. This transition down here is really not that realistic and if I turn that on and off you can see that there are some other hills back there and I don't really like the way that that's looking. So what I'm going to do is use my brush tool here I'm going to lower my opacity maybe down to about 20% and just using a big soft edge brush and the very tip of the brush here, the very top edge, I'm going to slowly brush over that area and that's going to feather back that new kind of blue or darker sky from affecting the area just close to the horizon. So there we go. That looks a bit more convincing. And that works out too because uh, typically what happens is the sky tends to be lighter the closer to the horizon you are. So that is natural and it's what our eyes would expect. I'm also going to lower the opacity of this ever so slightly, maybe down to about 80%, something like that. And let's move that over and take a look at that. Looks pretty good. So a very useful technique for uh, taking what is otherwise a blown out sky and adding back a little bit of color and tonality into that. And I hope you found that useful. Sign up for my free newsletter, Creative Digital Darkroom News, for Photoshop and digital darkroom tips and techniques, musings on photography and the creative process, and updates on workshops, seminars, and one-on-one -on -one trainings.